As night falls in Antarctica, the Navy ship HMCS Margaret Brooke darkens, switching to all red light. Slewed in. But there's still work to do. At the water line. On the quarter deck, a hive of discovery. Yeah, let's bring it on board. A long net pulled out of the ocean and hosed down carries small organisms, which play a vital role. So they're seeing here mostly voracious filter feeders. They eat uh, particles, organic matter that's in the water column, and then they poop it out. So they're the They'll be examining these salps the for contaminants. Here, this is a solitary form. Yeah. The scientists are educating the Navy's top commander, Vice Admiral Angus Topshi, on oceanography. Yeah, I'll have to forgive my science as well. I was an arts major, so anything I say the Navy has taught me. I'll stop, please. Roger, stop. We're in a collect water. Brent Else is sampling the Southern Ocean water using a CTD Lars, custom built in Canada. It plunges deep into the ocean under high pressure to capture water at different depths, here as deep as a kilometer. Let's hold here. Roger, holding. The rosette, as it's called, comes up brimming with water. And then we get a cap on right away. For the average layperson, you know, water is water. So you've got a whole ocean out there. You're collecting water and you're putting it in all these different containers. Why? Well, because water isn't just water. Uh, in an ocean like this, there's lots of different water masses. There's lots of different types of water at different levels in the ocean. Are you on 10 2 I mostly measure dissolved carbon dioxide. And I'm interested in how carbon dioxide moves from the atmosphere into the ocean and then moves deep down in the ocean where it, uh, where it is sequestered for hundreds or thousands of years. Bottle five has nutrients. It's liquid gold for these scientists. Everyone wants a bit of it for their own investigations. We all work together, we get the rosette drain faster so we can go back in and everybody gets to bed a little sooner. <laughs> Cold water in the Southern Ocean around Antarctica is a huge carbon sink, absorbing a lot of the carbon dioxide emissions we put into the atmosphere. But as the sea surface warms, that could change. As the oceans warm, as circulation patterns change, this is expected that that ocean carbon sink will slow down over time. And the polar regions are the areas where those carbon sinks are most important. For the last three weeks, 15 scientists from across Canada have turned the Navy vessel into a research ship. 50 meters. Working with a Navy crew to maneuver the boats. Oh, whoa! Take time off stern as well. Operate the crane, lower the winch, and generally assist them daily to gather up samples. The time's 1918, and we are at 147 feet. In this extreme environment, there's been a lot of learning. Good to go, you have permission to launch. This team is trying to haul up mud from the ocean floor, using what looks like a torpedo, weighted to plunge it into the seabed with force. One, five, zero. Jeremy Bentley is on the winch. Two hundred. The seabed sediment will tell them a story. Coming back in. Got okay, it? Yeah, got it. It definitely looks more disturbed at the top than the other one, but we'll keep this one just in case it's the best in the end. Sophia Johannesson will slice up the cores to analyze. Whatever happens in the surface above, the particles sink down and they build up layers in the mud, the newer ones on top of the older ones, and we can read that history back through time and we can learn from it. It's been pretty hectic. The first day was a bit of a disaster for field work. Pretty much everything went wrong that could go wrong. They adjusted and managed to fill a fridge full of samples. Turns out all mud doesn't look the same. If we take this core out, for example, and it's different ages. 
This is a section that's about uh, 1.5 meters long, and so represents about probably a thousand years of history um, at the bottom of the ocean. A thousand years of sediment here. Probably something like that. You can see that the sediment is much darker. Alex Normando and Karen Douglas will send these samples back to Halifax to be x-rayed. We use an x-ray, yeah. Um, it helps to enhance um, areas of the, the core that are denser than others. We can get a clearer pictures of the, of the past climate change and then being able to predict what's going to happen in the next 50 to 100 years here in Antarctica. Antarctica is a coveted lab one of the few places in the world which has mostly escaped a heavy human footprint. Sandy Steffen and Jeff Stuppel are sampling snow for what shouldn't be here. Contaminants like mercury deposits and microplastics. They can travel long distances from source regions into remote areas like the Antarctic. So we're looking for very minuscule fiber like microplastics to see where they've come from. Do you think they are here? Absolutely. Mercury is a problem because once it gets into the ecosystem, it can turn into a very sort of very nasty toxic form. They'll keep the snow frozen until it gets back to Canada for many researchers to analyze what's hidden inside. When I talk to people about the impact of climate change on things, they just consider warming. Mm -hmm. And they consider, you know, like the, the ice is melting and, and all this. And I said, yes, but what happens when the ice melts? Yeah, so there's a bit of a clearance too that's closer to that iceberg on the other side. The HMCS Margaret Brook carried the science team well past the Antarctic Circle. Between the two mountains, that's our channel. Breaking ice to get through. Okay, Roger. Revealing the powerful icy contours of Antarctica. While sailing to the most southerly point the Canadian Navy has ever been. Port 15. With the fieldwork in Antarctica mostly done now, the expedition turns back north. Slow ahead both engines. Leaving time finally for reflection. One of my goals in coming here was to make the Navy fall in love with science so that they would just want to, you know, keep working with us and, and keep going on adventures with us. And we've had nothing but support and that's, that's great. As Mission Antarctica comes to a close.